if you treat sexuality as something sacred and, and something so much deeper than just, you know, as, as someone commented under one of my YouTube videos, <laughs> the comment was, Magda, you're overthinking it. Sex is just rubbing of the genitals. Jesus. Well, if that's what you think, then I'm pretty sure that's going to be your experience. Mm -hmm. But if you can, again, expand your definition of sexuality and also look at it as a spiritual experience and a sacred experience, now you're opening the possibility for like way deeper, way deeper things. You know, that's what I was saying, like energy orgasm. You know, I, 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 when I was doing my practices, I'm not there yet, I will be honest, but like I could just get into like these orgasmic waves just through breath work or like sitting on rocks, you know, so I didn't need any sexual stimulation. Really? Yeah, because that's what our bodies are capable of. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what I can say. Teach but us <laughs> how to do this thing. It's like every drug you take, mm. you can get yourself naturally to that state if you open that, your body and that activate I know. yourself. And sex is a really good way to get there because it activates so much energy. It's so intense, you know. Well, definitely uh, we're going to, you know, explore that uh, field because it sounds fascinating, you know. I had this guy once. He was uh, a pretty close friend to, to me. They were not friends anymore. And I remember one day, because he was becoming all spiritual and awakened, and I feel like he pushed it a little too much. And I remember one day... <laughs> And I'm, I'm happy here to confirm this theory. He's like, bro, I met this girl on Instagram. We're having orgasm from distance. Like, I just dream that I am making love to her and she feels the orgasm and I feel it too. And I said, man, this guy is becoming nuts, you know? <laughs> and I still think so, to be honest. So what do you have to say about that? Look, I can speak about his experience it's possible that it was not real what he was saying because there's, I, I will say, I, I, I've gone through this path myself and at the beginning when you get into spirituality and energy work, you're like, I know everything exactly. and you're just like changing your whole world. But then actually once you go deep enough, you realize that no, you can't actually see energy, you're imagining things and like, there is a difference. Uh, so there is a level of advancement that a lot of people don't reach, but they just like to say things. So if you think of this, you can lie down and you can visualize uh, having sex with someone and you can come, right? So there is nothing spiritual or energetic <laughs> about it. It's basically like yeah. everyone has done it. You just play your fantasy in your head and you masturbate. So again, I cannot speak, you know, um, for him. I don't know what kind of experience he had specifically, but I will tell you that I think what I find really, really interesting is that we think of an orgasm as a consequence of penetration. Right. And it's not. Penetration is one of the ways how you can get into an orgasm. So, like, there's so many things that can that can do this for you, but you have to be open enough. So you have to open your body, do these. I mean, some people are maybe naturally open, and if you have no inner resistance, you can go into these spontaneous experiences. But, um, like I said, I've had mine during sleep, like pure energy experience. I've had mine after combo. Uh, so combo is, are you familiar with combo? Yeah, the frog thing. Exactly, yeah. right? So like, you basically you're puking for two hours and then, you know, you're coming back. And I, I felt all of this energy move through my body. And I was just basically on the floor, like shaking and kind of moving for like half an hour, just feeling so much energy and going like, you know, just riding this this interesting wave of, of, of like energy orgasm. Um, like I said, I easily had it in nature and breath work. My friend had her... Um, energy orgasm doing shibari so it's just like you know it's it's about this contraction and then letting go of control so anything that allows you to just feel very alive and very open can get you there mm -hmm. and so absolutely like I can I can remotely connect to my partner and it can just be visualization that gets me on <laughs> or it can actually be an energy connection but I will say that to have remote energy connection it's a rather advanced yeah. level of working with energy and probably most people claiming this are not actually doing that. Yeah, I know. It was a, a big lie. It's like he just met this girl like on Instagram. They never met actually in person. I'm like, come on, man. We can't be friends no more. <laughs> yes, I, I will say, unfortunately, I do see it a lot. Uh, right, we, like... we, we like adding extra meaning to things. We like it's a really interesting conversation I, I've had recently with a friend. Um, Stories are the single most powerful weapon any leader can arm themselves with. They are the currency of humanity. And those who tell inspiring, emotional, powerful stories 
rule the world. And today, I am super excited to talk to you about storytelling. To put it simple, storytelling changed my life. It allowed me to meet the most incredible people in my life, to raise capital for my startups in Dragon's Den, and simply improve my life as a human being. And today, I would like you to do the same. So, I am excited to announce my upcoming masterclass in the art of storytelling. And so, if this is something you're interested in, I would love you to join our masterclass. So, you can leave your details below and I will be in touch. Thank you so much and see you soon. We need to make things more special to appreciate them. It's like just the normal, ordinary is not enough. It needs to be special. And so you'll meet this girl, whatever, in on, like online or in person, like, mm, she's my soulmate. We have this very special connection. Does she have to be your soulmate? Does it have to be so special, right? What if it's just ordinary? Like, can it not be good enough being ordinary? So I think, um, I mean, it's, it's a way bigger conversation, but our generation is very entitled and then we get very disappointed with this. And so we're trying to like make ourselves feel um, unique and special by adding meaning often to these intimate connections where it's not true. And then you have people who meet someone like, oh, this is my soulmate, yeah. it's so special, two weeks later, no, it wasn't meant to be, you know? Classic <laughs> scenario. Yes. <laughs> So with the, obviously I can tell that you have a lot of experience and I think you, um, so do you have orgasm every time you make love to a no, man? No, so the thing is like, it still stays very true for me and it's going to be individual, but um, a woman needs to feel safe. Now safety is objective and mm. subjective. So what does it mean? Like, actually like, are you gonna hurt me, right? I look at this, but there's such a thing as an objective perception of safety. So this is based on my stories, on my past experiences with men, with my father, with life in general, and I take it in. And so you may do everything right, but it triggers something in me and for some reason I don't feel safe. So I, like, um, I, I do have like stories of abandonment, feeling like I cannot rely on the masculine. And so unless I really feel it with a man, I just won't fully open because I don't need to trust see. you. So it's the matter of when a woman feels safe enough to fully open. So yeah, absolutely. Like for me, I, I've seen that it doesn't happen all the time. But again, I'll say it's really good to kind of like orgasm doesn't make sex good, at least not for women. Like a woman can have an orgasm and still not really feel satisfied during sex and she may not have an orgasm and feel very satisfied. Now, quickies are a bit different because there's no deep Adrenaline. connection. Yes, yeah. it's a bit different and usually it is about an orgasm. But when we talk about being with someone in a relationship where you do share connection, the fulfillment and satisfaction comes from two things. One is how deeply you go with your partner. So it's the sense of love, of, mm. of literally intimacy, right? Like, like you know, can, can I really open up to you? Can we be vulnerable? Can we be raw? And second is you need to move energy because when the energy doesn't move, especially sexual energy, it creates frustration and then you just kind of like, oh, and we end up arguing. So you need to move energy enough, but you move energy through orgasm, yes, but also through any movement, through proper breathing, through shaking, through laughing. So as long as there's a lot of energy moving in the sexual act and there is intimacy, you will most likely be satisfied. Hmm. So does any <laughs> woman or a man have to go through all this, let's say, <laughs> trainings to be able to have a good sex life in a relationship? It depends. Yeah. So I always say to people, everyone has the potential to have a six pack. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We all have them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, just, yeah, exactly, yeah, right? Yeah. It's, it's, you know, and this is a lot of things, your genetics, your habits, and then what you do, etc. It's same here. So. Some people are naturally already tantric. Like, you know, they may have never heard the term, never studied anything, but they're just really open sexually. And then you have other people who are very tight. Hmm. And I have, for example, you know, met, um, I used to do uh, CrossFit quite intensely and in Bali. So basically a standard thing is like, you go to the gym, everyone is like half naked, like yeah. all the guys are shirtless. The best bodies I've ever seen 
but most of these men, I couldn't feel mm. them. So the sexual energy wasn't activated in them. And so it's about activating this energy and you can activate it in different ways, but most of your sexual energy is your appetite for life because it's your life force energy. Wow. So people who feel juicy, who are sensual, who are like, experience life deeply, they usually are really good lovers. But if someone contracted, right, and someone extremely like, you know, tight, leading to yeah. control and mm -hmm. tight, they're also contracting their sexual right. energy. So, so again, it depends where you are now. Um, some people may need more work and some people may just hear something boom, 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 and suddenly they're having these like deep energy mm -hmm. experiences. So it is, it is individual, mm -hmm. but I will say in most cases, because we have like zero sex education, yeah, I'd say it would be really beneficial for people to actually express something. Okay, so what you were saying about these guys, these tight ones, <laughs> I never understood what's wrong with them, but I feel like now I do. And uh, so how do you feel this energy? Like, well, what makes you feel this energy? Is it your training in this Tantra and stuff or? I think so. So. Mm. There's, there's a what energy are you feeling now? <laughs> <laughs> there's three guys here. <laughs> so in my case, first mm. of all, I am very intuitive and empathic, but that's actually a consequence of my childhood trauma. Okay. So people who have any form of like, um, well, if, 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 you know, your family, it's a little toxic, um, then children learn to be extremely receptive to other people because that's just a way to survive really it becomes a survival mechanism of the of the psyche so that was my case and i became extremely attuned to other people so that's like the downside but the mm. good thing now is that i really get to feel people on a deeper level and then yes i did train specifically for this to open my energy and to be able to feel people although i will say that i've kind of on purpose decided to step back a little bit from it and just kind of close my field a bit more because otherwise you feel a lot too much yeah yeah it can get confusing and also for me the moment i feel someone it's like now i'm now i'm involved now i'm engaged in it and so unless you're like my client or someone close to me i don't really want to be getting involved so much so i've become a bit more protective of my space i'd say but it's something everyone can learn by the way how well, again, any energy practice, you know, I think these days breath work is very popular. It's one of the best things you can do, but it has to be like proper breath work where you kind of break through your inner resistance to breath. Uh, for example, I hate doing breath work literally because of that. So you, you have this like heavy breathing mm. and then there's a moment where you're just like, I just don't want to do it, right? This is the magic point to go through, through. that mm -hmm. moment.